This episode of Marijuana Today Daily is brought to you by Natural Order Supply, one of the nation's premier cannabis cultivation supply companies located right in Grand Junction, Colorado. If you're an industrial hemp farmer and need a good supplier of cultivation supplies, whether it's lights or harvest equipment, or if you just need some advice on how to get better yields, then you need to check out Natural Order Supply over at their website at naturalordersupply.com. Good morning, Marijuana Nation. It's Friday, May 29th, 2020, and you're tuned in to episode 945 of Marijuana Today Daily. I'm your host, Shay Gunther, and I'll be walking you through today's marijuana news and headlines. As always, we have a full and busy day of cannabis news in our hands, so let's jump right into it. Our final top story of the week is a bit of good news, which I know I could certainly use today. As Kyle Yeager over at Marijuana Moment details a decision made this week in Arkansas that will allow for the remote submission of signatures of support for an adult use legalization ballot measure. Thanks to the ruling, supporters of legal adult use cannabis in Arkansas can now submit their signatures electronically. The group behind the effort, Arkansans for Cannabis Reform, need to submit around 90,000 valid signatures by July 3rd, with 20,000 or so collected to date. Best of luck to everyone involved with this one. Pop over to Marijuana Moments if you'd like more details here, and absolutely pop over if you live in Arkansas. We have a quick update on a storyline we've covered recently as Marijuana Business Daily is reporting that the Nevada Secretary of State's office is looking into allegations that multi-state cannabis operator MedMen's founders Adam Bierman and Andrew Maudlin engaged in a little bit of campaign finance fraud by structuring contributions from MedMen executives to a politician in a way to skirt around the law. The allegations came out of a lawsuit filed against the company by former executive James Parker, who said that he was asked to donate $10,000, the maximum allowed by an individual, to now Governor Steve Sisolak, who visited MedMen's office not too long after allegedly receiving the contributions to declare a special quote-unquote MedMen Day in the state. Nothing about that sounds dodgy at all. Soon after word of the potential scandal broke, the Office of the Nevada Secretary of State said it is investigating the matter, so we'll certainly be back with this one down the line. Taking us out on our top news train is Marijuana Moments' Ben Adlin, who picked up on a new study by researchers at Columbia University's Irving Medical Center that finds that states with progressive medical marijuana laws see a 20% drop in the number of certain opioid prescriptions filled out after medical cannabis became legal. It can be easy to forget that there are still a lot of people who die each and every day from preventable opioid-related deaths, so having evidence like this is important. As with just about everything in life, this one is packed with details and nuance and is a story best read in full. But again, in short, medical marijuana reduces the use of opioids. Science confirmed it again. Those are our top stories for today. It's time for Marijuana Today Daily Headlines Blitz. Before we blitz out in headlines, let's quickly thank our sponsor, Natural Order Supply, one of the nation's premier cannabis cultivation supply companies located right in Grand Junction, Colorado. Natural Order Supply makes cultivation convenient. That's why they stock all the products and supplies that a modern-day industrial farmer could need. They've also worked with hundreds of hemp farms since starting up back in 2015, so they are there for you when it comes to practical advice on how to better your yields. If you would like an easier and more profitable hemp cultivation experience, then you need to connect with the good folks over at Natural Order Supply. Get started on that by opening up naturalordersupply.com. That's naturalordersupply.com. All right, time for the Blitz. Illinois-based multi-state operator Cresco Labs just released its latest financial results for the first quarter ending March 31st, with $66.4 million in revenue, up 60% from the previous quarter, with the net loss of $13.4 million and an adjusted EBITDA of $3.2 million. Pop over to New Cannabis Ventures for all the other numbers and fiscal details here. As always, we have all the news we cover linked to on our website at mjtodaydaily.com. 
The U.S. Department of Agriculture announced this week that it has signed off on the regulation plans for industrial hemp filed by the U.S. Virgin Islands and four Native American tribes. This is a part of a larger storyline where each state, as well as Native tribes and U.S. territories, has to, before it can allow farmers to grow industrial hemp, get the FDA to sign off on its plans for how it will regulate the whole affair. So far, 47 states, territories, or tribes have successfully submitted those proposals. The Canadian province of British Columbia is looking at allowing its adult-use marijuana dispensaries to sell using curbside pickup and delivery in a bid to cut down on the transmission of the coronavirus. Right now, shops can take reservations from shoppers online to come in for a limited in-store visit, but can't conduct any retail over the Internet. That would also change under the proposed new guidelines, which comes attached with no set timeline yet for implementation. Keeping up in Canada, we have government agency Statistics Canada releasing some new data for 2019 that shows that the nation's legal marijuana crop added $1.6 billion U.S. to the nation's net agricultural income, which is defined as, quote, the difference between a farmer's cash receipts and operating expenses minus depreciation plus income in kind, unquote. The total amount of net income seen in the country by all farmers was $48 billion, so cannabis's contributions were not insignificant. Not a bad one to read in full for all the other details. West Virginia medical marijuana patients are going to have to wait another year before they can buy legal medical cannabis, as the state just announced that it would not be until spring of next year, at best, until medical marijuana products would be approved for sale. Lawmakers in West Virginia passed a medical marijuana bill back in 2017, but have struggled to get an actual program up and running. The Normal blog covers a new study just published by the journal Substance Use and Misuse that finds that people who consume marijuana are no more likely to be injured on the job than non-consumers. The researchers behind this one did a review of previous studies and concluded that there's no link between a person's use of cannabis and their chances of being hurt or killed while at work. Of course, that's true, but as always, it's nice to see science prove it. And finally for today, Zach Harris at Mary Jane has a story up about a new tactic by police in California where they just destroy everything they find on raids at illicit cannabis stores. The products, the fixtures, every single thing in the store. The police just destroy it all. Those are the headlines and news for the day. I'll be back with you again Tuesday morning with another information-packed episode of Marijuana Today Daily. But in the meantime, if you have any stories to share or feedback to give, zip us an email to headlines at mjtodaydaily.com. And while you're clicking around the interwebs, swing over to our website at mjtodaydaily.com to find links to all the news we cover. Thanks to our sponsor, Natural Order Supply, and to all of our awesome Patreon listeners for the support that makes this show possible. To join the illustrious ranks of the Patreon listeners yourself, swing over to our website at mjtodaydaily.com and click on that big blue button at the top of the page that says, Become a Patron. I'm your host, Shay Gunther. Thanks for tuning in and starting your day with marijuana today. Today. One take, Shay. One take.